When you are actively in the losing weight stage, if you want to continue with ketosis, you need to make sure that your carbs are low and that you're only eating good fats. And this is where this comes in. Hi guys, welcome to today's video where I will be breaking down exactly how you should break your water fast so that you stay in ketosis and you keep burning fat so that you don't regain the weight. The best part of this is that if I get a bit woozy in this video, it's because I'm actually on a water fast and I'm currently on day three. If you're new to this channel, I did a 21 day water fast about six months ago and this is a reset thing that I try and do like once a quarter since then. Typically every month I fast for three days just to do some sort of like reset, get some clarity and just recalibrate. I've been posting water fast videos now for a few months and you guys seem to be into it. So if you're new here, please make sure that you subscribe, you like this video and that you engage. If you're a returning subscriber, I have something good for you and stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm thinking of bringing you guys along with me on the whole wellness journey that I do every single month with my water fasting. If you want to intermittent fast and join along, if you want to water fast and join along, and you need an accountability buddy because you guys have been in my ears on Instagram, then make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video. So let's get right into it. The first thing that I'm going to say is that the core thing you need to remember is that fasting helps you to move into a state of ketosis. And if you want to continue to burn the fat after you've broken your water fast, you have to remember that it's important for you to stay in ketosis, which means that you shouldn't be breaking your fast with high sugar, high glucose things like fruits, or just jumping right into having KFC again. If you choose to do that, of course that's up to you, but just bear in mind that you will regain the weight. If you're doing a shorter fast like I'm currently doing at the moment, a lot of the weight that you'll lose is water. So that's one of the reasons why I'm actually thinking of extending my fast to around five days. In the UK, we're currently on lockdown, so the gyms aren't open. And if you saw from my last video, one of the things that I did to lose even more weight after my initial water fast was to work out. So it is incredibly important for you to refeed carefully Otherwise, you could balloon. Plus, when you're fasting, your metabolism actually goes down. You want to restore it and you want to make sure that you're not consuming food when your body is not as fast or energy efficient as it normally is. That is the reason why I'm going to show you today my special, not so secret recipe for bone broth. Bone broth is one of the things that I use to refeed after my 21 day water fast. You can see the video somewhere here, wherever that is. And a few of you asked me at the bottom of that video as to what my recipe was. I am not a chef. I am just a girl like you guys who is trying to optimize herself. And I really enjoy not thinking about food because I'm one of those people who, when I'm not eating, I'm thinking about food and I'm a very busy person. I'm a lawyer, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a career coach. So doing all of these things, if I don't take a hold on my eating habits, I can find myself just mindlessly eating at my desk and just diving right in. Anyway, so today's video is going to show you the core thing that I used to refeed, like I mentioned, it's bone broth. I'm going to talk you through the process entirely. In fact, you're going to see me cooking it. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video to give me your feedback and also to let me know if you want to join along with my next fasting challenge, which is only going to be for three days. I'm not a doctor. I am not a physiotherapist. If you want to join me, this is my lawyer's disclaimer here. All of the risks are on you. You have to make sure that you do your research. I've done my research and I'll be sharing some of those resources with anyone who wants to join me on this challenge. I am going to put in the work so that we both stay accountable. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video to find out how you can join along. And also, if you're just interested in the bone broth recipe, time to get into it. You may have spotted the bone broth over here, and I'm telling you, this is the good stuff. Can you see that? It's got like the layers of fat above it. It's also got like, it moves, it's the jelly-ish, and I'm super duper proud of it. So one of the reasons why bone broth is really good for refeeding is that it doesn't have any like carbohydrates or anything that will knock you out of ketosis. It's quite high fat, which is good for keto. And also I think the calories in it are, depending on what your recipe is, it's not that high. Oh my God, that smelled glorious. And I haven't eaten 
So, oh, smells so good. So anyway, now let's dive into this video before I ramble on. I filmed this video just before I started my fast. I filmed the cooking and everything uh, a few days ago, about four days ago. You can store your bone broth in the fridge for up to five days or you can put it in the freezer. So it's been a few days now since I made it. I don't think I'll be breaking my fast tomorrow as originally planned. Like I said, today's day three. I will show you somewhere around here what my stats are currently looking like, what my weight was when I started and where it currently is. I think I'm gonna go for five days at least. So I'm going to freeze this so that I'm not tempted to drink it and I will show you how to make this special bone broth right now. Right guys, so I'm gonna get into it and show you all of the things that I've got here. Before we get into it, remember that I am not a chef. <laughs> I am just a girl who likes to research and figure out a whole bunch of stuff. So this is what we're going to be cooking. Over here, I have my bone. This is like the proper like bone marrow. And I got it from the shops and it's already been chopped up. It's not the prettiest thing at all. It's not like the fancy bone marrow that you get in the Japanese stores. But basically this you can get from any butcher and I got it from my local butchers. I got them to chop it up for me and you can see it's got some of the meat, the really, really good stuff. And as I understand it, where most of the nutrients are is right in the middle over here. So when you go to like the really fancy like Japanese restaurants, I love when they get huge cuts of bone marrow and they grill them, but we're not doing any of that fancy stuff today. Then I have oxtail over here and I'm just showing you that you can see some of the lemons that I used um, to clean the beef because yeah, you definitely need to clean your beef, especially when you buy it from like the local butchers and stuff. They're really, really good with cleaning their meat and stuff, but you should still always try and clean stuff at home yourself. And my Nigerian mother would kill me if I don't clean my meat properly. Then over here, I have got celery. These are super cheap and you don't have to use them, but I don't use as much vegetables in my bone broth recipe because the nutrients is basically over here. This stuff here is like seasoning to give it the nice aromas. And obviously it does enhance the taste. So I like to use things like this. I don't like celery in normal life, but for my bone broth, I love it. And then this is just some bay leaf. I'm going to use maybe about three or so. Again, you can tell I'm proper like Nigerian because I have everything in plastic containers. I really had to struggle to find things that look pretty. Again, this is not my, my job. So <laughs> take it guys, this is how real people cook. Anyway, so I've got some onions over here. I love red onions. Again, it's just a thing. You can use brown onions. I just prefer red onions because it reminds me of my childhood in Nigeria where most of what I came across were red onions. I know you can get whitish onions and brown ones, but it doesn't really matter. You're basically going after the nutrients. Anyway, so here I have got black peppercorn milled and basically it's just the, the proper peppercorns and then you grind them across. I have got Himalayan rock salt. This is really, really good. Don't use the basic salt the reason why you're going for this is because it has a lot a lot of nutrients some people don't like to use salt while they're making their bone broth but i personally do because i'm going to use this as seasoning not just for when i break the water fast and my refeeding but actually like i make enough to use it to season my food when i go into keto or just whatever diet that you're on it's always really good to have bone broth at home i have oregano to be honest this is just I'm trying to use as many of the clean quote unquote herbs that I have in my house. So none of that like Maggi seasoning, which I have, I'll show you. I don't use stuff like this when I'm making my bone broth because it's, it's got some synthetic stuff in there that you're trying to avoid. You want to be as clean as possible. So the final or one of the last ingredients that I have is thyme. And then I just use a little bit while I'm cooking. This is essentially what I use for my bone broth, that's it. I'm going to make it in my instant pot and I'll show you what settings I use. Um, I need to chop up these celery stalks because they're huge. Essentially everything that you have here, all of these vegetables are going to really smush up. What you have in the end is like a pot that has meat, vegetables at the bottom and lots of really, really good bone broth. So what I like to do at the end is to actually sieve and get rid of some of these chunky bits of vegetables. So it doesn't matter that they're huge at the moment. You don't need to chop them up finely. 
And of course I didn't mention my garlic, but I have lots and lots of garlic over here. This is all that you need. Let's get into it. I'll show you how I chop them up, put it in the pot and what settings I use to actually make the bone broth. Before we actually start boiling anything, you want to grill all of this stuff. And again, some people argue against it, but for me, I like that smoky flavor that you get from putting your bones and your oxtail and everything into the oven before you actually put it in your instant pot or whatever pressure cooker you're going to use. You can see it's like super fatty. It helps you get rid of some of the fat, but again, you're not trying to do too much of that because all of this stuff is super nutritious and depending on how you consume it, it's actually really good for your body. So I don't really care too much about the fats and everything. I'm not going to be sitting there gobbling pieces of meat, so it doesn't really matter. Now what I do is I line an oven tray with tin foil because we're going to grill all of the oxtail and the bone marrow. You can watch me do that. The fact that it's so bloody sometimes grosses me out. I'm not really a big meat eater, but I do enjoy meat occasionally and I like my steak when I'm having it, I prefer it medium. So you can see we've got the chunk of beef over here. Oosh. I don't like that. Anyway, doesn't matter. This part is really simple. You don't have to do much, but just add some salt. This is the rock salt I showed you earlier. Just mill that. Then some peppercorns. I really like it to be super duper peppercorny. <laughs> so I tend to use a lot. You might prefer not to do this if you want to use your bone broth for like cooking later and you don't want your food to taste too peppery. But when you are refeeding from a water fast, you will definitely appreciate the fact that you have a subtle taste of black pepper, you have your onions, you have your celery, you have your garlic and everything to give you flavor. And then you know that everything that you have is real, not synthetic, not processed and yeah, super yummy. So I just like to just rub everything in at the moment. That is pretty much it. I really hate like the look of the tendons and stuff. It's not that pretty, but that's where we are. Now all you have to do is pop it in your oven to get grilled and browned out. Not too much. I don't know what the right oven settings are. Again, this is a very Nigerian thing where I just say, oh, it's hot. <laughs> and then I put it inside there. But I will make sure that I get the right settings for you and pop it in the description box so that you know what to set your oven at. But honestly, I don't think it really matters because you can look with your eyes and see whether it's brown or not. I am back and you can see that the bones marrow and the oxtail has been in the oven for around an hour it's very brown now and a lot of the fat you can see has come out of it so what we're going to do now is put it in the instant pot and then pressure cook it for around three hours so you don't need to go much longer than that because if you're using a normal pressure cooker i think it takes you like eight to twelve hours to pressure cook this but I have an instant pot, thank God. So it's only going to take me a shorter amount of time. So what we do at this point, I'll show you. I added some carrots and stuff to the vegetables <laughs> because I found them in the fridge. But essentially all we have here are everything that I showed you earlier. So we have the onions, celery, some thyme. Um, I don't know why, how that thyme, oh yeah. The thyme and ended up in there by accident because I was cooking something else at the same time and then carrots. So what we're going to do now is just throw in some of the meat pieces, basically all of them. You can see it's quite brown. This is what the bone marrow looks like. It's not the prettiest thing, but you can see all of these tendons, all of the fat around it is still quite good for you. And I think that's where a lot of the nutrients are. Anyway, we throw all of them in here. <laughs> so this is the oxtail. And I giggle because I already snuck a piece earlier of one of the oxtails. So, you know, I told you guys in one of my videos that I taste as I cook. 
So I wanted to make sure that this was well seasoned and it is. And you might be wondering why I'm not wearing gloves. Like I have leather hands basically, as you can tell, I don't, my hands are not the prettiest and they're very dry at the moment. So don't judge me, I'm not a chef. I'm just showing you the stuff that I have. You can see that there's lots of like beef fat there. So I'll skim that off separately and maybe use that to cook something else later. So let's just move this away. Here is the instant pot with the beef and oxtail and everything in there. Time to add some water. Some people prefer to like cover up the beef so that everything is almost like floating, but I don't think that's necessary. Again, I'm going to add a precise measurement of how much water you need, but like I said, I never really measure anything. I just eyeball things and hope that it works and it typically does. All I'm doing now is just trying to move things around so that the vegetables are at the top and the meat is at the bottom and everything is coated. I was being lazy because ordinarily I should have put the meat in first, but it's quite late as I'm filming this and I promised that I would film it. So you have to bear with me. This is gonna be very useful. Anyway, you don't need to add some more salt or pepper because remember before I put the beef and the oxtail in the oven, I did that already. I'm just going to add a little bit of oregano and there is some thyme in there already. This is honestly so simple. The next thing I'm going to add are my bay leaves. I'm just going to add three. Try and move these things around again. Right, so this is how much water we have. They're almost neck and neck with the um, beef marrow and the oxtail and everything in there. Then I will just pop it in my instant pot. And that's it, you leave that until it's done and it's going to be super tender at the end and then you let it slow release if you have an instant pot you know what i'm talking about for around 15 minutes or so good morning it is now the next day and i will show you what the bone broth looks like mm -mm -mm. you can see so much goodness it's been chilling in the pot overnight just because i fell asleep i was so dedicated to this video that i was filming around 1 a.m but you can see like the brown bits at the top. This is from when we browned it early in the oven and it gives it that nice golden rich color. Now I'm going to show you how I drain it and then decant it, put it in like little plastic containers, store it and gel it. So let's get to that now. Right guys, so now you can see all of this rich, dark brown and golden bone broth that I have over here. And it's just, it smells absolutely wonderful. So, so, so good. I love how rich the color is and I'm pretty certain that this will gel. Don't hold me to it, let's see how it turns out. So something I forgot to mention yesterday is that I understand apparently that if you use some apple cider vinegar, and you add just a little bit, like maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon before you start cooking your bone broth, that it helps to get all of the fats and the, like the gel and things like that. It helps to break it down and release a lot of that. So use that. I'm not too much of a fan of using apple cider vinegar when I'm cooking, so I, I didn't use that, especially because I knew I was going to be cooking it for a while and it would be resting for a long time. So I didn't bother, but that's just an FYI. But this looks so good and now I'm going to put it in some of the plastic containers and next time you see this bone broth it will be gelled thick and all of that goodness so ready for you to have when you break your water fast now it's time to show you what the bone broth looks like so you saw me putting it in the fridge and pouring it into containers and I am very very proud to say like I showed you at the beginning of this video that it is moving just like jelly. I hope you can see that in the video. And 
The layers of fat right at the top are so good. So I typically use these fats to cook my vegetables. If I'm not just drinking the stock, I will also use it in my cooking and it is so delicious. It's much, much better than anything that you can get in the shops, but it hasn't got any bad things in there like MSG or like artificial salt. I will show you. It's a complete replacement for something like this, right? This is the Noor chicken stock cubes that pretty much every Nigerian has in their cupboard. And I love using this, but when you are fasting, especially when you want to stay in ketosis, you need to make sure that you're eating as clean as possible, eating low carbs, eating good fats. This is so, so important. I'm not really a fan of dirty keto where people just eat like KFC and things like that because you've just spent all of these days depriving yourself of food and it's important that you move into like a more healthier space. It's very, very important for you to have balance. And this is something that's very, very important for me. Like, I don't want my life to be dictated by food. So I definitely will not be eating just like chicken and a salad for the rest of my life. I will still be eating carbs and everything like that. But when you are actively in the losing weight stage, if you want to continue with ketosis, you need to make sure that your carbs are low and that you're only eating good fats. And this is where this comes in. One of the benefits of refeeding with bone broth is that you will find after an extended fast that your stomach is super sensitive. And honestly, even after having this bone broth, don't be surprised if you have a butt explosion the first time you go to the bathroom. I know, I know, I know, TMI, but I'm gonna keep it real with you. That definitely huh, happened to me. Can't believe I'm saying this on the internet, but I knew that I was consuming something that was really good and I'd done my research. So. If you guys want to join me, if you want to know what the recipe for bone broth is, have a look in this description. And like I mentioned at the outset, if you want to join me on my next fasting challenge, you can be an intermittent faster, you can be a water faster, but this is not for people who want to do like 21 day fast or something. This is for people that want to fast with a purpose. So whether that is mental clarity, whether that's it to get into the right mind state so that you can start your fitness journey properly. Because like I mentioned to you guys before, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a personal trainer, I'm not any of these health people. I'm just someone who has done her research, is very passionate about biohacking, and I commit that if you guys are willing to join, it's not going to be free. I'm just gonna put that out there so that you have skin in the game. I'm going to make sure I share with you all of my resources we are going to be doing daily check-ins during this three-day fast where I will be talking about one of the reasons why I do my fast, how to identify the underlying purpose. Like I know for many people, willpower is the big thing and I cannot say how much fasting really helps me to develop that strength. Like now, like, I mean, my boyfriend's going to be coming over soon and he's going to be having dinner. I'm, I'm not even feeling like I want to eat that which is so much of an improvement for where I used to be, where at work, if I got the email, but there's cake in the kitchen, no matter how busy I was, I would run over and have it. And I think having willpower and discipline serves us really well in all aspects of our life. This is something that the Stoics have talked about many, many times. And this is the reason why I personally choose to incorporate fasting into my lifestyle. So if you're interested in joining me, then make sure that you click below in the description box and I will send you a link. Don't be surprised if it's something super basic, just to get your email address so that once I've figured out the whole process, I will shoot you an email and say, this is how you can join us if you want to. If you found this refeeding, how to break your water fast video helpful, then please do make sure that you share, you subscribe, you comment below so that I can do more of these videos. I cannot emphasize how not an expert I am. <laughs> and I just want you guys to take ownership of whatever fitness journey that you're on because there's so many people on YouTube that will tell you keto is the way to go, fruitarian is the way to go, but you have to make sure that you are making decisions that are informed and that you are doing your research to find out what is the best for you. I have found that I enjoy fasting mainly because of the strength that I feel like it gives me. Right now I'm feeling very weak, but in my mind I'm feeling very strong and empowered. I'm like, hey Dells, like, 
you've done this it's day three and you're still going and i only intended to do this fast for three days so anyway i've been sharing my journey on instagram it's there at Dells ogun you can see in my story that is highlighted water fasting you can check out my journey from my first 21 day water fast breaking that with my bone broth and i'm just going to end here now because i've got a meeting and i am rambling i hope you've enjoyed this video let me know if you have and toodles